Gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This, first of all, this amendment certainly is germane. It goes to the heart of the evil bill that we are considering, and I strongly support it. The gentle lady from Wyoming talked about men competing in women's sports. Men do not compete in women's sports. Transgender women may compete in women's sports. It does no service to the truth or to human biology or understanding of human biology to maintain that there's no such thing as transgender women, or for that matter, transgender men. There most certainly are. We know that. We see that. People did not ask to be born transgender any more than any of us asked to be born male or female. They just were born that way. And now we have this bill that wants to punish them for it. I strongly, I strongly oppose the bill. I support the amendment. The amendment would require NGBs to commit to submitting annual reports to the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Committee describing the impact of prohibiting transgender women and girls from participation in an amateur athletic competition on the participation of women and girls in those amateur athletic competitions. As I mentioned in my opening statement, I oppose this legislation in part because its blanket ban will harm all women and girls, in addition to all transgender women and girls. This blanket ban will likely subject all women and girls to unfair scrutiny of their gender identity, to physical inspections, if not lead to outright subjecting them to invasive screening procedures. It also would likely lead to increased harassment of any other person perceived by anyone as not conforming to harmful and discriminatory stereotypes based on some people's expectations of femininity. I have no doubt that this increased scrutiny and harassment will have a negative impact on all women and girls' participation in amateur athletic competitions. I think it important that the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Committee and the public be made aware of the costs imposed on all women and girls when transgender women and girls are targeted for discrimination. So should such an immoral, awful bill ever become law? While I still would not support the underlying legislation if, if adopted, I would urge members to support this amendment. It slightly improves an awful, evil piece of legislation. I urge the adoption of the amendment and the defeat of the bill. Uh, the gentleman yields back. The question occurs. Oh, Mr. Jackson, I'm sorry. Point of board is withdrawn. Ms. Jackson Lee is recognized. Well, I thought that uh, Chairman uh, Diggs was going to offer his support for the legislation. I was going to yield to him. Uh, he supports the legislation. He probably doesn't support the amendment. Uh, and, and uh, well, in particular, this, this amendment. Let, let, let me, um, uh, I don't even want to get into the weeds of the details of a very fine amendment. What I think um, is the crux of the wrongness of our presence here today in the underlying bill is a very attack on humanity. And it has been my understanding, being in the judiciary in this room and being on this committee uh, for two decades plus, that our basic infrastructure is to improve and enhance the conditions of humanity. We use the Constitution in some instances, very proud document that we utilize as members of the Subcommittee on the Constitutional Law that deal with the basic uh, life of Americans. Uh, it governs whether we have equal protection of the law. It governs whether or not we can be in the courtroom. It governs whether or not our race will discriminate against us. It governs whether our language will discriminate, uh, will be a basis for discrimination. Um, and uh, we could argue our, our sexual orientation. But our proposition is that it is to make human life better. This bill attacks humanity, attacks the very dignity of acts or conditions that one cannot change. You are a human being that has this description. You cannot change it. Your loving daughter is a loving daughter 
and one of our human family. And our job is to make her life a life where she is applauded in this nation as part of the extended human family. Why would we even entertain legislation that is denigrating, denying, destroying the life of a population of people? The trans community exists. They are children, they are adults, and God, if they have not been killed, they are now aging, many of whom have lived in the shadows of life only to protect themselves from being attacked. So my argument, Mr. Chairman, is for you to even have brought this bill up. This is not a bill that should be on the roster for the Judiciary Committee. This is a bill that is destructive. And if there are particular cases that need to be addressed so that there is fairness. I wrote the legislation, the anti-doping legislation, proud to have that signed, uh, dealing with the Olympics to stop doping in the Olympics, signed by President Trump, to enhance the quality of performance, and when I say performance, the level of uh, equality in the Olympics. Someone would not have drugs in their system, enhancing drugs. But this does nothing. And if there is a case, as I think my colleague from Washington State said, if there's a case, these have either been handled or they should be handled. So frankly, I'm appalled. Underlying, I am hurt. Because in this instance, I can place myself in the categories of the 20th century and now the 21st, when race denigrated me. I'm still in that category, but when it was severely used to denigrate me. I could not vote. I could not sit on a bus in the front. I could not ride a train as a little girl. I had to ride in the colored person's train, a kaboot, whatever it was, as I traveled to visit my grandparents with a brown bag of food because I could not eat where they served food. I traveled as a nine-year-old. As my parents put me on the train, they had to explain to make it fun that I was in this car versus another place of seating. My ticket didn't cost any less. And so I respectfully ask that this legislation be withdrawn from the roster. I ask unanimous consent because it has no place on this particular set of legislation. Gentleman from Kentucky. None. Gentlemen. And with that, Mr. Chair, I, I, I ask unanimous consent that the uh, bill be withdrawn. Gentleman, gentleman from Kentucky objects. Um, gentlelady's time is expired. I yield. The gentleman, I yield. gentleman from Kentucky is recognized. Uh, I move, Mr. Chairman, I move to strike the last word. Gentlemen, and, gentlemen can proceed. And i um, like to yield time to Ms. Hageman from Wyoming. Thank you, Mr. Massey. Um, there is really no discussion so far on the actual bill. There's a lot of emotional language and a lot of accusations being made by my colleagues on the other side, but no discussion about the uh, need for the bill that we are debating at this time. In terms of the amendment, I would like to point out to uh, my colleague from New York, as he read the amendment, he actually changed the language of what is stated in the bill in order to make a point, uh, because he recognized that the, that the word that is in this amendment actually completely undermines every single thing that he said. According to the amendment, it would insert the line, commits to submitting annual reports to the corporation that include for each calendar year a report describing the impact of prohibiting a person whose sex is male from participating in an amateur athletic competition that is designated for females, women, or girls on the participation of females, women, or girls in that amateur athletic competition. So the very purpose of this amendment is to do a report on the impact of allowing men to compete against women 
um, and, and have a, a requirement for that annual report. I think that I can tell you what that annual report would show and that that would be that every time that a man competes against a woman, or virtually every time, they're probably going to beat them. So I don't know that we need that, that report. I, I oppose this amendment for that reason alone, but I would ask that in the future when you are reading the amendment, you actually read what is stated rather than what you wish was stated and then arguing against that. It's a classic straw man argument. Um, on the other side, there have been discussion about invasive screening procedures and that if we adopt this, our bill, that there would have to be invasive screening procedures. In other words, this accusation that for any woman who was competing in athletics, they would have to be subjected to a physical examination. First of all, it's a red herring, it's stupid as all get out, and it's just absolutely not what has happened historically. But I would point to the policy by the US Boxing uh, uh, Association, which actually requires that very kind of screening. Um, it must state that the boxer who transitions from male to female is eligible to compete in the female category under the following conditions. The athlete has declared that her gender identity is female and has completed gender reassignment surgery. I would assume that the only way they're going to be able to determine that is if they actually physically examine these people to determine whether in fact they have been castrated, which I find to be an absolutely uh, absurd position to be taking uh, by the Boxing Association. Um, I, I would also say I, I do not need to be lectured by a man on the issue of protecting women and girls in sports or what a woman actually is. I know that. I, I know what a woman is. I do not need to be lectured that we that somehow by saying that men cannot compete against women, we are hurting women and girls. That is an insult to women and girls. It is an insult to me personally that you believe that I am not capable of understanding the difference between women and girls and men and boys. Um, I also believe that the entire argument is focusing not on the issue at hand, again, whether men and boys should be able to compete against women and girls in the Olympics, which is all that this bill does. I would ask unanimous consent to submit for the record the instances of men hijacking women's sports and the various uh, uh, examples that we have demonstrating not only the injuries that have been suffered by women as men have participated in, in, in girls' sports, but also the women who girls and women who have been affected by this, including uh, 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 Riley Gaines when Will Thomas de decided to, to join the the female, the women's uh, swimming team in Pens uh, Pennsylvania. Again, this bill. Not is objection. About I object to concluding these mistruths in the record. There's an objection. Okay, I think that speaks volumes as well. If you do not want in the record the information about the impact that men are having on female on women's athletes. I would also submit for the, ask for unanimous consent to submit to the record three articles, USA Boxing Slam for New Transgender Policy that allows biological men to compete against women. Objection. Boxing Champs Olympic Gold Medalist Rip USA Boxing over Transgender Policy, Girls Need to Stick Together, and USA Boxing Codifies Rule Allowing Male Participation in Women's Division. Without objection. Gentlemen's time is Biết 
cách ai còn nhớ đến ân tình không đường xưa in bóng hai đứa nay đâu những chiều hẹn nhau lúc đầu giờ như nước trôi qua cầu giá biệt bạn lòng ơi thôi nay xa cách rồi kỷ niệm mình xin nhớ mãi buồn riêng một mình ai chờ mong tương đêm gói chia môi u hoài này anh có hay nếu ai đã từng nhặt hoa thấy cảm thông được nỗi vắng xa người thương màu hoa phượng thắm như máu con tim mỗi lần hè sang kỷ niệm người xưa biết đâu bạn lòng ơi thôi nay xa cách rồi kỷ niệm xin nhớ mãi buồn riêng một mình ai chờ mong tương đêm gói chiếc môi u hoài này anh có hoa thấy buồn cảm thông được nỗi vắng xa người thương màu hoa phượng thắm như máu con tim mỗi lần hè sang kỷ niệm người xưa biết đâu